Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines 2 and the growing town of Blackwater. Now, in the previous episode, we built a brand new residential district and unlocked railways, where we added the first passenger station, which is currently still under construction as the rail line gets developed. Now, of course, the backbone of our city is our rich and diverse variety of industries across agriculture, forestry, and mining, as well as our general factories. The focus of today's episode is completing the rail line, and building out an industrial services area complete with a cargo terminal to support our industry and some extra utilities for our town. We're then also going to bolster our industry further by expanding our farms and our mines and work on a few smaller road infrastructure projects in the town itself. Now to kick us off, I've got a time lapse of redeveloping the motorway and adding our new four track rail system that stretches to the edge of the map. But just before we get into that, I just want to mention if you enjoy the videos, please do consider liking them or sharing them as it really really does help a lot. I try to upload as fast as I can. I do cover other series on this channel as well, but I think the time between uploads for this one in particular has hurt the series quite a bit, unfortunately, as there's been quite a noticeable drop-off in the last video especially. Now, either way, I'm still really enjoying the game and I'm going to keep going, and the feedback has been excellent, so if you can spare the time to like, subscribe, or share the video, it really does mean a lot. All right, let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, kicking things off with a time lapse here right at the beginning, about six or seven minutes, and fun fact, just thought I'd tell people, I actually record the voiceover for these time lapses at the end of an edit, just in case I need to catch people up on something that's going to happen later. Um, so if I sound a little tired, it's because I'm coming off of a 10 hour edit. I'm a little dejected. It's been a really long one, but it's been very fun. I really enjoy editing and that's why, I, basically, this is why you don't get that many episodes. Because I spend way too much time doing that. But anyways, uh, so in order to put in the rail line here to support the industrial services area. That's kind of what I'm just calling this because it's not just cargo. There's going to be other things in here as well. All very large buildings. We need a big flat plateau and we're also putting in a rail line. So I've decided to slope the two parts of the highway that I cut. So we have an even slope going up to them and then choose a middle point where we kind of flatten it out. And that's where the industrial services point is going to go. So working here, we've got another problem. Terrain's just always going to be this problem, right? Where we have a map where it's just slowly, gradually rising all the way up towards the mountains. And there's just nothing that can be done about that other than creating sections of flat areas or working with a very small slope, a very small incline. So that's what I chose to do here. And I'm kind of just testing it out, right? So we have this flat center, central point. But then I did add in, as you'll notice, a very small slope going further back. We'll catch that in just a second. So just placing back in the highway, now that I know roughly how far out the road is going to come, at least I thought so. It, it actually ends up going a bit further back in. Highways back in there. And now I'm working out where the cargo rail terminal is going to go. So it only has one entry point for rail. So it has to be kind of placed vertically here as the rail line can't go through it. I don't know why you design it that way, but... I mean, actually, in real life, I feel like a lot of them are that way, but still, <laughs> it's annoying. I can't choose which direction, I guess, it snaps to the road is kind of my point, right? It has to basically be vertical so that the rail line can join either side. So that's done. Remove some more trees. In order to connect the rail line from one side of the map to the other, the highway junction that came built into the map has to be removed, has to be redone. Um, I don't profess to be any good at making intersections, but I'm do I'll do my best here. <laughs> and w what I end up with is serviceable at the very least, I think. All right, so as you can see, just continuing to use that slope tool to connect the rail line now over towards where it's going to join onto, and also trying to connect the allow the highway to kind of gradually move up the land towards the the A10 road that leads straight into the town. Um, because it went underground, we had this like dip in the terrain as well, so I had to just slope that out between the two parts of the highway. So I'm, I'm getting a lot better with the slope tool. It's really underrated, or at least it was for me underutilized for sure. Now that I understand how to use it. Uh, it's been great. So you basically just right click the target height that you want something to go to and it also orientates based on the direction of where you your target was. So they really should put like a little pin on the map when you do that to let you know. Because as you then slope from another point up to it, the angle of the slope will actually be towards that point. Not articulating that very well, but anyways, you right click and then if you just left click and drag from some other point, you'll see the direction that it's moving towards. So it's actually quite a powerful tool and it creates even spacing then between the increments of height. So it'll always be a meter increment every contour line, but it'll space out all those heights or all those differences to be the same, which is quite nice. Anyway, as you can see, just reconnecting the highway then on this side and changing it to be a three lane because it's actually a two lane highway. Uh, so making it a three lane pretty much the whole way across except for the bridge because they don't have those map tiles just yet. 
And then it was just working out the spacing, like how do we get out of here? Again, another intersection time lapse, basically, which is trying to figure out four lanes that come off of here to join onto the highway in different places. Now, there's a ton cut out here because I was actually thinking of making a more complicated interchange where it was going to be two lanes coming off, which you can see at the start of this time lapse here, this bit. There is two lanes exiting the highway. And the idea was that that two lane would fork and one of them would go over towards the industrial area. I was having a lot of trouble doing that and making it look reasonable. A lot of that's just been cut out. You won't even really see it. Tried going under the ground as well as a kind of a cheekier way of doing it. And I just couldn't really make it work. And then I kind of looked back and thought, like took a step back and looked at it and thought, I don't even really think we need that. You know, there's another access point onto the highway for the industry. Uh, over on the west side of the map. So I kind of would rather they go there than clog up this particular intersection because this is where all the people are going to be coming in and we're going to increase the density of housing very close to this highway uh, soon enough and close to the railway where that passenger railway station is if you can remember from the previous episode. If you haven't watched, no worries. We'll show it a bit later. Um, anyways, a bit of a ramble there, but you get the idea. So just it took me a while. This is the final attempt, but was pretty happy overall with how it, came, uh, how it came to bear. I'm not very good at math, so I guess ultimately that's what you'd need to be doing, right? Is kind of mathematically working out the perfect turning radii and sticking to it all the way around. So I didn't really do that. I just used the complex curve to have multiple bend points and you can kind of shape it to, to make sense. So the other thing I did was I purchased all the map tiles all the way to the far edge of the left side of the map, or the west side and uh, extending the highway all the way out there. So the highway came pre-built that way, but I wanted to just move it over in order to give more room for the railway that's gonna go alongside it. So we already have that intersection down there, which I did build, um, and the rail line is gonna run underneath it, which means changing one part of the road as well, which runs along the ground. One of the off ramps goes along the ground. So again, using that slope tool, it's become my best friend. Uh, it's maybe not the most natural looking thing, especially when the contour lines are on, but when you turn them off, you don't really notice what's happened there as... Uh, it's not as obvious, I guess. Uh, but also, in between episodes, I do a little bit of, like, landscaping and shaping the terrain, just a little bit more to make it look slightly more natural. So it might look a bit more natural when the game actually is playing than it does here. Um, so again, just using the parallel tool, connecting the three-lane highway all the way up. And now is the time for deleting that road I was talking about, that off-ramp, and bringing the railway underneath the junction. Now, see, this wasn't built with that in mind. I mean, it should have been, because I did talk about it. It's a, I think it's raised 10 meters off the ground. Actually, I think it's raised 15. But if I could go back in time, I would have done it maybe to 20, which does seem like pretty high. But just for this point here, you know, you kind of gradually rise from 10 up to 20 and then back down, or sink the land underneath. Uh, more appropriately and that way the rail line I could have done this a lot smoother so this junction reconnecting this sorry this off ramp again I don't really show it as clearly but if you were to really look at it it's quite a steep drop right as you get underneath the uh, the bridge it's, I was quite lucky that it even worked at all um, but it does work and uh, you know I'm being honest about it but we'll probably actually never really see it I guess uh, up close unless we decide to redesign it at some point and um that's the red line hooked up and that's pretty much it all right ladies and gentlemen it seems like a pretty good jumping off point for our time lapse man is it dark dank and gloomy today here at blackwater we're on the cusp of winter clouds are looming overhead and we're about uh, three in-game hours three and a half in-game hours away from december where we might actually see our first snowfall so hope people don't mind this I like the realistic climate and everything. I think it's totally cool, but yeah, I know visually it might be a little harder to see things as we duck under the clouds and our town is basically covered in shadow for the most part. But anyways, what we're going to be doing today is focusing on the meat and potatoes of the episode, which is the industrial services area. So all of that infrastructure was all in service, no pun intended, of the industry that's down here supporting it getting all those goods out of here because if you remember in our production panel we've got a surplus of like a thousand one hundred tons of wood a thousand tons of stone 640 tons of coal in surplus so that all has to go somewhere and it'll either go onto the highway or now it's going to go onto the rail so i left a lot of space here hopefully for future expansion storage warehouses should fit in quite nicely on the sides and you can actually just add another rail line if you want don't know if we'll ever really need that, but I guess it's if they start backing up, you can have two slots. It means changing the rail here a little bit. That's kind of a temporary solution just to get us onto the inside lane. The inside lane is going to be our cargo lane, and the outside lane is going to be the, or lanes, trains, tracks, that's the word, rails. 
that's going to be for passengers. So we are connected up to our, pass our first passenger station, which is just over here. Uh, it's offline at the moment. Might actually hook it up today and see some people coming in. I plan for a big development here in the next episode, including adding a university. But I really just want to focus all this episode just completely on industry, adding lots of buildings, building them up, and then hopefully unlocking some of the specialized industry maybe as well, if we can get close to that. So a dairy house can be unlocked if we just add three more farms. A ground earth crushing machine building can be added if we add seven more mines. Now, the mines actually take up a decent amount of space if you want to make them big, but you could just make lots of smaller ones, which I might actually end up doing in gaps that we have. So we could kind of fill that up. And then there was also the paper factory, which if we just add five more forestry buildings, we can get that. So there's tons of forestry over here. There's also extra fertility spots. There's more ore to be had up in the north. So yeah, if we add one, two, three, another three over there, not going to add one down here, as tempting as it would be to get on this ore deposit. It's in the heart of the town, just feels obviously wrong to do that. This is going to be built up a lot more. The idea is something along the lines of just basically making this a lot more high density, as they have access to a train station, putting a university in somewhere here, and then having a road that kind of shifts out and under, follows along the rail on the inside, and maybe connects over to the industrial area that way too. We'll see how that goes. And then obviously we have to start thinking about bridges and how to get across. Anyways, I digress. As much as these little things are pulling my attention right now. Need to focus up. We'll just stay out here. So let's get the trains running, yeah? And see if it all works out. So we go into our trains. Unlike City Skylines 1, we actually have the cargo railway route tool. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, as mentioned, the inside rail line is going to be for cargo, and the outside rail line is for passengers. So we'll just click that. We'll go all the way down to the edge of the map now. Select, and what is it called? It's called Carisbrook. Might rename that, actually, the outside connection town. So Carisbrook, and we just send it straight in here, and then back out. So it's actually a kind of a black line, which is really weird. Kind of cool, though, to have, like, black trains, but I think we'll just change that color to maybe something like yellow. Just for the industry. Maybe orangey-yellow make a bit more sense. And we should see them rolling. And it might take a while, but I imagine... Oh, yeah, so in order to actually get them running, we need to activate our rail yards. That's quite expensive. 30000 a month. It's going to really hurt our income, especially over given a little bit of time. So completely empty. 1,200 tons capacity. So the cargo rail uh, train terminal has capacity of 15,000 tons. It's already taking in wood and rock, and it's going to be capable then of having the upgrades on the side, extra warehouses, should we wish to add them in. It's worth mentioning as well that my XP is just been blowing up. Every time I load into the game, it seems to just give me 2,000 or something. And I've seen other people mention this too, that with the latest patch, it's either recalculating XP based on things you have already, or there is an actual bug when you just load in. Um, it seems to give you some, so not entirely sure what's going on there, but something's definitely happening but if you're noticing this just jumping up really quickly that's why uh, all right so we've got another truck coming in livestock being delivered straight away so it's good to see it working right away got things coming in and then i guess oh it didn't pick up anything we might have to give it a bit of time and wait for this place to fill up with some stuff i'm guessing it's also going to import some things and then we'll see we've got our first rail line set up let's hook up that passenger terminal as well um, this is probably going to shift over in the next episode when i build it out but we'll just turn it on right now anyway Popped it on, 23,000 a month. And then we'll just go in and hook up the passenger railway line tool. So the inside double track is reserved really for trains going by, which is, a, I, I admit, is a bit strange, but it's just gotta be the way it is <laughs> until I can figure out a solution to that. I mean, you can allow for crossovers, I guess. All right, we'll bring this, I'll change this color to red. I'll bring this all the way down to the same place. So that's called Carisbrook. Yeah, we'll need to rename that. Hey, it's winter, I think, because the color grading has just changed. Yeah. Chilly weather. It's midnight, December. Winter has begun. It's kind of nice, though. That cool blue tinted effect. And it may start snowing. Who knows? Right, so with the first train en route, they're rolling out of the rail terminal, I would imagine. Oh, there we go. That's times one speed. Now, there's not going to be anyone on this for a while, I would imagine, or very low volume. Now, there is actually... I've changed around the bus route slightly. There is a bus route that actually comes down here and picks people up or drops them off. Um, so maybe we'll see some use there. But that's going to be it, really, for that. Just going to focus over here, like I said. So a tough thing in this build has been trying to level off the terrain as we get up to this higher point here. 
I thought about trying to lower it down, but it just it's just a problem that never ends. It just always goes up and up and up the further out to the mountains you go. So at a certain point, you just got to say, look, I got to work with it, not against it. So what we're going to do is actually hop into our development points, go to recycling or sorry, the garbage management section and get the recycling center. Collects and sorts garbage to produce reusable materials. Selling the recycled materials creates additional income. <laughs> yeah, so actually if we, that's the interesting thing with recycling, right? We can sell it off and make money. So, um, collects and sorts garbage to produce reusable materials, which are then sold further. This produces income for the city. It can be upgraded with a garbage truck depot, a hazardous waste collection point, and an extended storage. So it seemed to me to have this near the cargo train terminal would be a good idea. It's worth mentioning with this building, it seems like trucks only ever go in and out of this particular drive here. So if it was up to me, I'd probably like them to come use this one a bit more, the one that's further down here. Because it's just a little close to the junction that's there, and I didn't want to bring this down any further because it's quite close to the rail line and there's a hill. So it was just a whole manner of different things that went into the decision of placing that there, but hopefully it doesn't get too backed up. And I would actually say for now, we can turn off the traffic lights there and just let them roll. They'll all largely be going the same way in future, I think. But yeah, we'll see how that all shakes out for us. So garbage management, let's begin. So we have our recycling center. It's going to be 880,000. We have 5 million in the bank. And I was just going to place one straight up down here like this. 2,000 XP. Bonk. All right, so that took a little bit longer than expected, but it's finally in position, and I'm fairly happy with it. Now, we've actually just had a train come in here. What's it carrying? It just delivered a little bit of everything. 100 tons of, like, everything in just one go. I noticed that it has all these carriages that are, look like they're pretty much full. So it's got a little bit of everything, and it's just dropped it off up to 3,000 tons of material now in our cargo train terminal. Nice to see. All right, so that should cut down some traffic that we're coming into the town, you know. Right, so this building's now in position. Obviously, we're working with an incline, uh, a steady incline that goes from here all the way up to that area there to where the woodlands begin. We can see our garbage trucks rolling out now, which is nice to see. Uh, the idea with this place was to add another one in here at the back that will slightly mask some of that hill and the warping a little bit. Now, if you move this over a steeper hill, you can actually see where it's going to change. Or in at the back, you can see how it would look really nasty snapping into this road, even though it actually lets me do that. But I think it'll be fine here. I'm not going to place it in now. Obviously, it's 880,000, and I just blew about 500,000 moving this building back and forth until I got it in the right spot. So apologies for that, but we could just chalk it up to some bad planning and a little bit of bureaucracy made this building cost us a little bit extra than we initially we went over budget let's just think of it that way so we're at 29 out of 32 employees right now now this one is always kind of confused me a bit check this out we can store up to 1500 tons of garbage and we can also process 1500 1500 tons per month the upkeep of the entire building is 160,000. now i think the benefit is that you don't need any extra employees the employee numbers are so low that I just don't know why you'd ever do an upgrade rather than just placing another building. Because the, the benefits are so much better in just placing another building. And that's extremely apparent when you look at this one, the hazardous waste collection point. So it collects hazardous waste, allowing garbage to be processed at a higher speed. Now, maybe there's something in the game I'm not aware of with nuclear or something, or maybe the petrochemical plants and things where you have a certain type of waste that needs to be collected, hazardous. But to me, this just reads as it adds 50 tons per month processing. 50. We process 1,500, 1,500, and this does 50. And look at the size of it. It's huge compared to the building. For 50, you'd want it to be like a 2x2, two two, maybe, you know? And then the upkeep is 40,000. So you're telling me that if I make four of these... It's the same upkeep as running the entire building, and it would only do 200 a month rather than 1,500. I mean, there's something crazy with those numbers. Am I wrong? Let me know in the comments, because I'm genuinely curious what other people think of that, or am I missing something, which I'm totally, you know, open to. Maybe hazardous waste is a specific thing that this module allows you to deal with. That could be the case. And then there's the garbage truck depot, which sits on the building itself. So fair enough. So you're telling me that that's 1,500. That's 15 times the amount that's going in that little patch there. I don't believe it. Anyways, let's see what you all think of that. We're up to actually 31 out of 32 employees now. And we have our first snowfall, which is cute. 
All right, so that's just something I wanted to mention going into that build. I just thought it was kind of interesting. Now, the next thing would be to connect a road down. And then we want to build uh, post services and things like that as well. So, I th I've steadied off the land to come all the way down here with a pretty natural decline. 5.1%. Hopefully, it's not too bad coming down this way. Stick it in there. Nice good zoning, at least. So, I'm happy to see that. And you can let me know, by the way, at the comments for this one, if you want snow on or not. Um, I think during snow time, I'll probably be trying to speed up a bit so we can get to spring soon enough. Um, but yeah, I've seen people say, like, on YouTube that they just don't want to see snow at all. Like, you know, it's fine for a few minutes, but then it's just blindingly white and annoying for a long time. So I totally understand that. So you let me know. We could just go into developer mode and turn it off. Um, I'm very curious to keep an eye on the next train that comes in and see when it goes off map. Do we make money? I'm at 2.8 million now. We're losing 10 grand a month, though. But I'd be very curious to see how that works for us. Now, we're also gaining people. And have we seen any activity at the station at all? We could check those trains just really quickly just to see how they're going. So this one has 18 people on it. And this one has 7 people on it coming into the town. Oh, the other way around, actually. Sorry, my bad. 18 coming in, 7 going out. Yeah, that's fine. Totally fine. Obviously, when we start building up that area, we should see train loads of people coming in, uh, which would be great. So the next thing then would be another block. Um, I had mapped out about 236 meters across. Not that we have to follow that, but it should allow me to fit these various buildings in. So that's about 232. So about here and come up. So the idea was that we come straight up to there. So I might have to do this terrain manipulation thing again. Try to create a steady slope and see how that works for us. Right, so I was thinking if we maybe meet at the halfway point of that contour line, the one in the middle, we could create a retaining wall here that isn't gigantic, but would maybe look a little bit more realistic. And then we can maybe smoothen out the bottom part of it. So in order to get the retaining wall to actually work, I'll need to cut the road, of course. Then we need to bring the quarry out. Did it work? Uh, not at all, actually. <laughs> oh god. Oh, I found the issue. This road is gonna have to be slanted itself, which makes it even more complicated. Okay, so that should give us a nice slope all the way from one side of the road to the other, and then we just flatten the halfway point of that so that we can create a retaining wall on the inside. All right, that gives us a much steadier slope of negative 1.6 decline whole way across and a pretty solid retaining wall the whole way across as well now all right we did it so um the last thing then would just be kind of flattening out this terrain one last time to match the area that we want all right it looks a little bit better now as well the road's not perfectly straight it's kind of wavy but i don't really know why i built a very steady slope from here to here and connected the road across, and it said 1.6 incline, but you can see it's gone, kind of gone a little bumpy. But I'm just going to leave it. I think it's the best we can do, especially from up here. It doesn't really seem that noticeable. Man, the place is caked in snow. It actually looks like it's the snow that's building up next to the roads and stuff, which is pretty cool, but that's not what's happening. It's just the land <laughs> that's been terraformed badly. Um... But anyway, so yeah, so basically want to go in now and add the communications post-sorting facility. It processes and stores mail for dispatch. Mail is collected from post offices and mailboxes and delivered to post offices and outside connections. So my hope with this building is um, that they'll use the cargo train terminal to import large quantities and export large quantities of mail. Don't know if that's how it works, but I think it is. So that's kind of how it describes itself as the bigger sorting facility for some of the more local mail. Um, so yeah, we'll just bring that right in again next to this road. It is a main road, and the only traffic I foresee on this road is just, you know, trucks coming in and out with the mail. So it shouldn't really be a problem adding it here. I'm just trying to think, actually, should it go sideways, maybe? Maybe starting from here now, getting rid of that road completely. Give us some more steady... steady slope. Yeah, that's a little bit better. There's just some snow gathering here on the sides, but what can you do? It's a little bit better. You don't have to leave it like that. I think if we put the wide sidewalk on this, it'll actually balance out as well. 
Yeah. Kind of wish you could use that the whole way down. I think you got to use mods in order to get that to work, but whatever. So it is actually raining now. I wonder, are we going to start seeing some of the snow retreating? Yeah, it is actually, just slightly. It's already going away. So that's not that bad. I wouldn't mind it if it's only there for a little while. Uh, I guess we want it to actually rain then, clear some of that snow. Seeing as we're at zero degrees. I guess it's gotten a little warmer and that's why. It's kind of cool. All right, so I've just moved that building temporarily. We'll pop it back in now. So we'll send it back out on the bottom. All right, so I'm giving it a clearance gap of two. I should also keep it nice and flat and away from that road, so maybe that's a bit better. And then we could do something with this area ourselves. So then in here, we'll have the storage extension in the future. Just want to map out exactly where that's going to go. All right, so pretty happy with that. So let's check out the building. 80,000 upkeep a month, 20 out of 20 employees already. And then they have got a bunch of mail to work on. So it might take them a while to get rolling out, but I hope they do. Now, the idea is that this building is largely going to serve the large expansion that we'll have down in this area. It's a lot more high density is going to go down here. So if you recall, the only mail that we have currently is just out here. It's just that one. And mail service availability is slightly lower than what we're processing, right? There's 3,000 extra mail being made per month that we're actually getting through. So we're technically not even serving everyone and we're planning on adding a big extension down here. So I'm hoping, and like I mentioned, that road is gonna connect from the cargo service area kind of over to the high density industrial area by going underneath the highway here, the motorway. So that's the plan. So hopefully that kind of connection will allow kind of garbage trucks and the post or whatever else just needs to kind of get over there quickly, go that way without going through the town itself. That's at least the plan. Uh, and as well, people who are commuting to work might be able to get out here as well a bit easier. So the next thing that I wanted to do was services. In the water and sewage, our only sewage right now has just been pumped into the river um, with a sewage outlet. So I was gonna get a water treatment plant. Not sure how much they cost though. So it's a processing and purification of wastewater. Treated water can be safely recirculated into the water network or disposed of in the environment. Hmm. Disposed of in the environment. Well, whatever. Let's get that and see how this goes. So that's going to be the wastewater treatment plant. Another 400k. And I think it should fit in here. Oh yeah, fits easily. No problem at all. So that's good. So you could have it there. Or we could do this and maybe push this even in. One, two, three. Three pushed in. And how far out does this come? So can only, the road can only come in by two. Got it. All right, let's do that then. Oh, hey, check it out. Money's actually positive. And population is still growing by the hour. And people are still happy. Nice. That's all well and good. And a train has just unloaded some extra vehicles. And I think it said electronics. So we're still importing things all the time. I wonder if that money's coming in because we're exporting stuff. That's even with having this now. So I was just about to say, I've got the road layout now where I'm fairly happy with this little area here. And I'll show you the future plans. But um, I'm not so happy about the fact that there's no vehicles in use. There's no stored mail. They haven't done anything. <laughs> there was 20 employees. They actually just went down to 19. Someone's just quit. He's like, I'm not doing anything here. There's no progression in this company. And someone else has taken that position. So yeah, don't know if that's... I heard the people saying that mail is bugged somewhat. I thought they'd patch that, but I, I don't know the specificity. That's right. Specificity of the bug. Um, oh man, that position's gone again. Axed. <laughs> Anyways. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to get used. If I don't see this building getting used, we're just going to shut it down. Which means we'll still pay 8000 a month rather than 80000 But hey, at least we'll save something. Money's falling back down now. So the plan is to add the mail storage extension. So I've got room for that now in here. Hopefully that fits nice and tight in there. But we've also just unlocked, as we saw earlier, the wastewater treatment plant. So I was kind of trying to figure out some spacing for that. So I feel like here and here could be quite good. I'm leaving a gap behind the buildings in the retaining wall on purpose. Um, want to fill that in with some other things, maybe some trees or just even like pave it. I just think a bit of distance to the wall might look good. Uh, it felt weird being right on top of it, but you guys can let me know what you think. Um, right, so yeah, let's just play, pop one of those down. So 400,000, that extra upkeep is going to cost me as well. Oh yeah, money is coming up actually, it's quite nice. So let's go for it. 100,000, oh, sorry, 1,000 XP and 400,000 for the actual cost. 
So it's 120,000 a month. 50 potential employees. And its water output is 16,000 a month. Fresh water is needed all around the city by citizens for their everyday needs, as well as by companies for various processes. So yeah, the interesting thing is this produces water and takes away the wastewater, right? So that's quite cool. Here, advanced filtration system. 10% purification rate. So I guess some of the water... So we're treating 420,000. Our purification rate is 50%. 50 so half of that... That can't be right. Shows how much of the processed sewage is converted back into fresh water. There's no way that's... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Of course, we don't produce that much uh, sewage. That's probably why, right? So we're producing 85,000 sewage right now. So we still have the outlet active. So let's power that down. Or at least... Or delete it, even. Let's just power it down for a moment. Say that's where it was. It's still flowing, though. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. Last bit of poop water has run out. So we should see a lot more coming through this system now. So now, yeah, there we go. And by proxy of taking in more, we are putting out more. And we saw that it was 80,000, wasn't it? So 85,000 sewage treatment, 85,000. And we know that the purification rate means that half of that is being converted into regular water and pumped back into our system. And people are none the wiser. <laughs> And also, we're still actually quite efficient, despite only having just over half the employees here. Surprised about that. It maybe might take effect later, because it knows that we're just hire in the hiring phase right now. Yeah, it's quite interesting. So, I hadn't showed it, but the previous ground aquifer was here, and I'd moved it up here, the groundwater pumping station. So that actually produces 84,000 per month. Yeah, we're overproducing, which is great. So what we could do is hook up a pipe all the way out of the map and sell some of our excess water. I mean, why not? So we'll just grab a water pipe here. Just snap it on wherever and just send it off map, right? 1,700 for that pipeline. Super cheap. Now if we go to our budget panel, uh, here, service trade. So we're at zero obviously right now. Give it some time and some of that water should roll out and make us a little bit of change back. Just something. I doubt it'll be that much, but it should give us something. We'll give it a few minutes and then I'll check on it. Oh, well, actually, just, just to be safe. That's definitely hooked up. Yeah, we can see it traveling that way, so that's all good. And it's definitely got its outside connection water. Good. Yeah, all good. Great. Yeah, nice looking building as well. So this is reserved for the future, and this could be reserved even along here. So the next thing over is the extra processing units. So an extra 100,000 sewage can be treated for 40,000 upkeep. Again... The numbers just, to me, don't quite stack up. Oh yeah, the efficiency is now dropped, now that it knows that you don't have enough employees. But that's fine, that's okay. But anyway, yeah, so never gonna add that. I would just always add more buildings instead. And then there's the advanced, that seems okay. 20,000 upkeep for an extra 10%, eh, that's fine. You know, that seems okay. But yeah, the actual buildings, not so much. Okay, the next thing then is gonna actually cost us another bit of money. I don't know if we really got this money, we might have to take a loan soon. But it was to go with the advanced fire services, the firefighting helicopter depot. So something people had mentioned is like, hey, you don't have any police station or anything out by all your industry. So good point. We don't. So I wanted to rectify that by adding in the firefighting helicopter depot. 1.2 million to add this in. But it's there to protect, hopefully, all of our forestry industry, of course. Um, it's 10 times the cost of a regular fire service building now i don't know where this is going to go so maybe alongside sideways like that would be good but let me map this out it's a very expensive building so i really don't want to be shuffling that one around i think it would also make sense to have a local police station that seems reasonable to me do we need healthcare out here i mean there was an ambulance that came out here from inside the town i don't think we need that like an actual medical clinic you can let me know on that one. That one's a bit up in the air. For me, I would say no. That I think vehicle... It's so rare, and I think vehicles will just come out here if it's needed. Honestly, I would have said the same about police. Because look at all this. We've got police vehicles roaming around here just fine. But I suppose the argument would be like, well, they could be inside the town. I guess. So more might be better. Certainly the fire helicopter depot makes sense, though, just from the perspective of keeping fire at bay. 
Well, anyways, I guess another thing that we need out here is parking, so we can put that down quite cheaply. Um, so just go with a... I'll actually go with a large parking lot. And... Is there one that's a bit more central? I suppose even just somewhere down here, for now, is totally fine. And it's relatively centered on the area, so if people are arriving here... I mean, the buildings have a lot of parking built into them. But maybe some people will use this. Turn off the parking fee on that one, I think it's totally fine. Alright, so checking in on the service trade, our exported water is 2,000 per month, right? So that's uh, that's pretty weak. Pretty weak indeed. And that's why I remember people early on were like, oh, build like five water pumps and export your water. It's like, I don't think it's worth it. I mean, you must have to export like 10 times the water you consume. Surely the building's upkeep offsets anything you get back. But maybe, I don't know. I'm not an economist for the game, but... So water output 100,000 per month. Do you get more than 10,000 by selling 100,000? That's the question, isn't it, really? To figure that out. Uh, and we cut off our water that was up here, so now we just solely rely on a water purification uh, wastewater treatment plant. Now, back to the trains just really quickly. We've got a train pulling in. And I want to see what it gets loaded up with, because it's at 0 out of 1,200. So coal and wood, there we go. So we're at one point... Oh, look, the money just went up. It was at 1469, now it's at 1472. I wonder, is that from this, or will it trigger after it goes off map? Let's just follow it for a while as well and have a look at this journey, even though we're going backwards. We should see the passenger trains coming in as well in a moment. Bit more high of an incline than I would have liked there on that hill. All right, so this is about to go off map. Yeah. Oh my God, we've actually come up by quite a bit of money here, forty or fifty thousand. So money says it's going down, but it is climbing. So that's gone off map now. So the reason I wanted to see off map, what would happen. It's just because usually like a couple minutes after something goes off map in City Skylines 1, you make a bunch of money. Yeah, so that's so interesting. We're after gaining like, I don't know, 50 or 60,000. Either since that train pulled out of the station or it's the trains that have gone off map, you know, when they quote, reach their destination. Maybe that's when we kind of get this influx of cash. Kind of interesting though, because our current trend hourly is going down, but our money is actually going up. Especially since this is consistently putting stuff out. So we're actually profitable, I think. It's kind of interesting. Um, so I was thinking down here, we'll just fill this area up with more farmland. And then maybe we can actually build a dairy farm in the future. So I'll just bring it out like that for the moment. And then we can start to sweep it around. So we'll curve it. And we'll bring it to, I don't know. What is it? 168 meters that way. Bring it to 168, and maybe we could shape it to be... I'm just going to have to gauge it by eye, but I want to keep a relatively, like, same distance away from the track the whole way around. So that's what I'm aiming to do. That's alright. I think I actually did pretty good for a first attempt. Those are nice looking trains. Quite big. They have two floors to them, don't they? Yeah, they do. Two floors. Man, fancy. I wonder will they add other models in the future? Like in the first game, you could have like lots of different types of models. 17 passages. Still not really many people on it, but there's not really much capacity for people to move in right now. Once we um, zone this area in the future, then I expect we'll see those numbers climb greatly on the trains. Now, since hooking up this industrial area, the resource costs have actually shot up, it seems, for certain buildings here. So the weird thing is, they require rock, and they produce concrete, and they're saying like, hey, it's very expensive to get this rock right now. I don't know what I could do about that, because production-wise, we have 1,138 tons of rock in excess that we're exporting. So why is it so expensive? What's your problem? So you're making concrete. If we went down to concrete, should we lower their taxes, I guess? Maybe that would help you guys out. You're an industry that uses this stuff, so I'd like it to be cheaper for you. Make it quite cheap, actually. 
maybe that will help them in the future. I don't know if this little effect will go away soon. And then these ones are complaining even though it's metal ore and metals. Hmm. What about you guys? What do you make? Concrete and rock. So at least maybe two birds with one stone on this one. They're also complaining high rent. So I'm lowering their taxes. So they should have more money in their back pocket at the end of the month. To keep the doors open. I would hope. We've also got high resource costs for a petrol station. They're complaining that it's... Yeah, I wonder does it cost them more to import from the train now rather than it did just trucks driving in or something? I wouldn't see why, but I don't know. That could be effect, uh, an effect that's happening. something I didn't know. I didn't know there was pigs, sheep, goats, and the like in the game. I think they were actually in one of those, you know, buildings that just generate, and then because I moved some of the borders, the building went away, and now they're... Well, they're just roaming free, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so we unlocked the dairy farm, and the farming in Shady Acres is now complete. In fact, we'll just have to extend out the borders of this district as well. Alright, so there we go. Shady Acres. So employees, 453 capacity, 444 at the moment in total. It looks a bit of a mess with all the random bits, but there we go. The company is Dubelbok. Don't know how to pronounce that, but there you go. All right, and it's just level one as it's going to be leveling up over time. So basically, now we have the industrial signature building, the Dairy House. It's quite a large-sized building. Now, we could actually carve out some room and just place this down here. Get rid of a little bit. Like, somewhere in there actually might be pretty good because it's a bit of a, a nice and even square area. You could place it right in the heart and maybe a car park next to it if that would fit, if it needs it, which it might. Should we do that? How much is it? Oh, I don't think it costs anything. I think it's just because we've unlocked this so far. So, export profits citywide increase, and so does industrial efficiency. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get that in there. Alright, there we have it. So, the building is currently empty and available for rent, but we still get the bonuses, I assume. 2% industrial efficiency citywide and export profits citywide. So maybe we'll start making even more bank as we ship a bunch of things off the map. So we got this empty spot here. I thought maybe we could actually go with the even larger car park. I don't know if... It depends. How many employees is this going to have? But we won't know, I think, until a company takes decides to take this. No company has taken interest in renting this building. This may be due to poor connections, a lack of custom customers, or high land price. Higher industrial demand will resolve the situation. Well, it's pretty high right now. Taxes are hurting things a little bit, and unoccupied some buildings that are unoccupied. Taxes are hurting things, really. In industry. I guess 14 might be considered high for some people. Let's bring it down just by one. Bonk. Um, but yeah, livestock is quite low. I assume this falls under livestock. Cotton's going to come down as well, because we're going to change that. I'm sure given a bit of time, it'll be taken. Maybe it is because it's in the middle of nowhere. But, I mean, there's all these other companies here. You think someone like, uh, who did we see? Meaty Bits? Why don't they buy it? <laughs> and if we were to just hide the UI for a second. I know it's snowing a lot, but that's basically what we get. It's snowing heavier and heavier now. You can see the building's roof is actually getting more and more covered. It's kind of cool. As the place freezes over from no nobody using it, 
It is 8 p.m. as well. So we'll just let time play. Maybe when we look back on it, it'll get taken. I hope it does. It would suck if we got to move it. I actually really like the placement. Not a big fan of just adding car parks, but I really, I don't know what else you'd kind of be able to put in here. Other than I could just add some trees and kind of decorate it, which I don't mind doing. Depends what you guys think. I thought car parks might make sense for the area, considering people do commute here and will commute here. Um, and I assume a bunch of people work at this company. The other buildings that we've gotten, excuse me, that are specialized buildings in another playthrough of mine where I'm playing on stream, and it's a different city, and I've just been testing things out. It's just not really well planned. I just kind of throw things out there to see what sticks. If you've been watching, you kind of know. Um, but we've unlocked a few of these fuel plants and things. They have like a thousand employees. So I'm like, wow, okay. So that's why I thought like this would need some car parks and space around it. But I guess I don't know. If no one takes the jib, then I won't really know. But maybe it just needs to be positioned a bit closer to some of the services and then it would make more sense. It's not that far from anything though. And with the demand being as high as it is, that's really surprising me. So just taking a quick look at some of the specialized industries, there don't I don't see anything that would relate to cotton specifically or vegetables. It seems like we've gotten the agricultural one now. It doesn't you know it doesn't seem like there's any more to be had there. So I was just wondering, based on what we produce, we're currently lacking 35 tons of vegetables, 43 tons of cotton. Those are the two agricultural resources that we don't make enough of. We're borderline with grain. We're almost one to one with grain. So we can leave that, I guess, even though it's dangerously close, I guess. Um, but these two, you know, these are going to require a fertile patch of land, and this is the only fertile patch that we have anywhere nearby uh, that we can kind of get right now. There is some across the river, but again, this is all space for the city, not necessarily space for agriculture and deposits and things like that. But the further out of the map we go, we can set up remote farms and things and actually put it on the train line and bring it in, or just on the highway, whatever makes the most sense. Uh, so yeah, so I think I'll go with textile fiber farming. Oh, we're very close now. But yeah, textile fiber farming and just lay out a couple areas here. It seems like two of these will be enough to handle this place. Give a decent amount of jobs and then we'll just hook them up to the uh, the road network as well. Yeah, so it sort of remains to be seen. I need to see what it looks like without the, uh, the snow on top. Hey, we just crossed two million. I don't know if I mentioned that already, but yeah, we are making money. That's great to see. So I guess the cargo, just the exports, has given us a little bit of money. Has anyone taken this up yet? Still? Really? God damn. How's our station doing? Our frozen over station. Oh, wow. There's actually quite a few passengers here. Look at this. They're waiting for the bus to come back around. Hey, it's here right now. And a decent amount of people actually got off. So there's still people waiting. Now, that's weird because there's only one bus that rolls around here. So what are you waiting for? Destination is Fatty Bites. So you wanted to go down here. Yeah, you should have taken the bus. The bus will take you directly there. That's Millfield. So to reorientate around, here's the train station. Millfield is up there. That bus line is the blue bus line. And it's the 44A to Millfield. So I'm not sure why they didn't get on. Not sure. Anyway, these people are heading in now. Train is just leaving. There'll be another one soon enough, I guess. We're actually, we've just crossed 8,000 population as well in total. And it's 2 a.m., wow. Getting the train in at 2 a.m., trying to get the fatty bite. Been there. So I thought it'd be worth checking the unemployment situation now as well. Hey, it's down to 3.1. So yeah, just those extra industries are helping a lot. Um, again, another thing worth checking, production. So we do produce more than enough coal right now, but we don't have anything for metal ore. And we're quite close to the coal deposit that's right there has more that we can add more coal onto that but there's metal ore we could easily get the metal ore here so i'm just gonna um expand that tile and grab that and set up an industry for that as well all right there we have it again because of the snow i feel like it looks extra bad oh cool got another stone crusher thing full skill grinding <laughs> that was my nickname in college All right, anyways, so that is going to be our two metal ore production facilities up and running. So what I'd like to do with this area is actually make it look like a quarry. You see a few creators doing this, and we did it. I dabbled with it on my stream soon after the game came out, actually. So had the idea as well myself, which was to do that kind of layered landscaping. So you have that kind of quarry feel to it. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the snow, I feel like that's going to be really tricky to do. I can't really do it now. So we'll probably do that in the springtime, try to make it look a little bit better, a little bit cooler. 
um, a more natural looking. I'll probably clean up a little bit of the grids here, but this is more just like a, you know, we're focused on really getting our production rates up there. So now the textile fiber farming or the cotton is, uh, we went from a deficit of 40 to a surplus of about 80. And then we can see for the metal ore, it's probably going to ramp up a little over time because we're getting employees all the time into it. And we haven't really been growing the population that much. I mean, I actually did gain like a thousand people, but I mean, I haven't zoned anything, new places for people to move in. So because of that, we're not getting as many people who are going to take all the jobs. So it might take a bit longer. Long story short, I imagine this will go up quite a bit, but it's already in the surplus again. So that's great. So that's just more stuff to export and hopefully just even more money to make as time goes on. We're in the early throws of January at the moment, and we now have 26 map tiles and 16 development points. So we are so ready to start pushing across. I'd love to get a, a better handle on what's going on, though, over here. So we lowered the taxes for these guys, but they still have problems, you know? Rock and concrete. They're trying to make concrete, they require rock, and they're complaining, specifically, that they have trouble procuring relevant resources at profitable prices. I have no idea why. So that seems to have only popped up since building the railway. So I wonder, is it anything to do with the fact that, or, you know, they're getting competitive, I suppose. So these guys aren't being competitive enough, but the other cities are paying more for it, is, trying, is what I'm trying to say. That's cool, by the way. You can see our snow plow going around. They actually changes the road maintenance vehicle, but that's slowing the trucks behind us. What are you carrying? You're going from Round Rock to Milford. This is just one of those... Truck that just uses my city just goes straight through it for no real reason, other than to distribute something somewhere else. They're carrying livestock actually in there. What about this one? That one's carrying timber from Round Rock to Darley. Where the hell is Darley? Oh, Darley. And then the train is going to. Didn't the train say it was going somewhere else? Harrisbrook. I might just name these the same thing so that it seems like it, they're kind of going to the same place. It's a bit strange that they're different. Uh, well, I think one of the very last things I'd like to do while we're waiting for some of the numbers to change around a bit is clean up this area here. In fact, actually, just before I even start, one of the reasons I wanted to do this, not only because it looks a bit glitchy, I do want to have a road go down there. It's going to be difficult to do it. But notice this. Now that we have the road lines turned on, you can see that there's actually only one way to get across or go right if you're coming down this road. So this road is called Garnet Street. It should be called Salford Road. A lot of people are saying it's Salford, not Salford. Uh, it's my city. <laughs> Fine, Salford, whatever. So Salford is over there, right? Our industrial area. Um, spelled Salford, but we'll call it Salford. So Salford Road continues all the way out to our industry. That's what it was before, but I think changing that road a little bit renamed it. Anyways, you'll notice that if you're on Salford Road and you're trying to get over and you're trying to continue on Salford Road, that you're going around the roundabout, there's actually only one lane you can follow to get there. For some reason, it's said that this lane, the left and the middle lane, are reserved for turning left only. And I think that's because of the way the road cuts down here, but it's also because of we're using a six lane road here. Everything's a bit strange, so I'm just gonna try and change this up a bit. So you gotta cut this away and cut this away and then link from here to there. That should create a retaining wall, I think, just by default, without even having to do anything. I'm um, gonna use a an asymmetrical road rather than the six lane. We'll go with five. And then I guess I'll have to try to position this in the center. So we want existing geometry, zoning cell length, zoning grid, guidelines, and 90 degrees. There we go, turn off cell length. Actually, we don't need that. Right, so. So we get that guideline in the center there. I think that should be okay. Well, you think it'd be okay, but it's not. So I'll try that again. Might just be the case that we need to do a little bit of extra landscaping here. So that's our target. That's our area. I'll just bring this out. And then we'll just get the flattening tool and just level that into the halfway point, pretty much. And then try again. And hopefully that kind of understands what we're doing now. Seems good. 2.7%. Seems like a steady incline. All right. And we have floating taxis and stuff. But other than that, we're looking good. And it seems pretty steady. And it's put that on the right side. But, oh yeah. And now we have a lane going across the middle. Two lanes across the middle, which is nice. So you'd want... Yeah, exactly. This is the way it should be. This should be right only. This is left only. And the middle is now, you can go left or right. Well, ideally, go straight ahead, right? I'm not seeing a straight ahead 
arrow there, but I would imagine that that's allowed. Although maybe not. It looks a bit squirrely with the road patterns. But let's see if people do it. So those buses are doing it, no problem. So let's follow this tr pickup truck. No, he's heading out. That car. Yeah, that did it. Okay, that car did it. As long as someone's doing it and it's working. Yeah, it's working. Okay, good. Great. Awesome. That was actually pretty easy. It looks so cool. That is just the terrain, but it looks like snow is gathering at the base of that. I really like the look of that. Um, so, now comes the challenging part, where I'll probably be quiet for a minute. We have to try to connect this down here again. Uh, so, let's give that a shot. Hmm. Might make a few changes with this. So, this is a big highway that comes all the way down, but I don't think it needs to be a highway until we get, like, much further out. So, I'm going to cut this, actually, up to about there. And we're going to upgrade it and change it into just that five-lane asymmetrical road. I think it would make more sense. Or maybe here it could become a six lane because it needs that extra lane for people joining on. So switching into a six lane and upgrading it somewhere down here. Can we put down a little point for that maybe? I don't know how easily this will work, but if we turn off the zoning cell lanes, we can get more central. Hmm. Maybe this should be <laughs> seven lane asymmetrical. On this side. And that way they're merging on and then we could bring it back down to a six lane as it continues out towards the highway. I think that actually works. So one thing that kind of bothers me is that, you know, because of this, there'll be this like little little bend in the road here, but I, I can't really seem to get rid of that. Yeah, it's interesting because putting a, a barrier in the middle like that and then widening it. And the issue would be, that'd be fine if we could have a divided line all the way, but we can't because large roads, if they're asymmetrical, can't have the island in the middle. Okay, that actually just worked really easily. And I think I will just leave it at that, actually. <laughs> that just worked like first attempt. I don't see any graphical glitches. It seems totally fine. It's a lot further down than it was before, but it seems totally fine to me. So we'll just clean it up again with the uh, crosswalks and stuff. Just get rid of those. Don't need traffic lights there either. And it is just a single lane merge on. So you've got two lanes. That left lane can come down onto Hemlock Street. Should we, what should we call that? Westgate Link as well? Because you're getting onto the Westgate Link either way. So that's fine. So you're onto the Westgate Link. You can go out and around. So yeah, totally fine. Good. My only thing would be like, I guess people who are coming down here might travel along and then take a harsh left turn into Strawberry Lane, which would suck, but I can't seem to say they can't do that. So using the straight thing, straight, the no-go straight ahead, no straight ahead, no straight ahead clicked doesn't do anything and removing it doesn't do anything. No left turn. This motorcycle is just going to be like, well, I don't know what to do then, right? Maybe they will just go straight if I keep it like that, but the line connections have me believing that no. So I'll put on no everything, right? So there's no everything, no right turn, no anything. And then I'll say, you can do a straight line ahead, right? So I'm right clicking and it's not doing anything there. So if I right click the left hand turn, it does open it back up as you can see. So we'll see what happens. Keep an eye on it, but it doesn't seem uh, exactly how I wanted it to be. Uh, and then we also just have to clean up some of these things here. Bonk, bonk. See you later. And you can have wider sidewalk there. And in fact, maybe a bit of grass on the side, some trees. Just for this area. And the snowplow is doing a great job, man. Great job. And it's raining now, thankfully. So snow should hopefully clear. And maybe the snowplows are going to go back, are they? Heading back to the road maintenance depot right now. Could be a coincidence. Maybe not, though. I love that people just drive with their windscreens completely covered in ice. Oh, he's taking a weird route. Hang on. Oh, no. He's just doing his work shift. Sorry. I thought it said going back. That's just, just who owns it. And he's still technically working. Fair enough. All right. Do we have any people waiting down at the train station? Yeah, I've got a few. Waiting in the rain. I feel a bit bad for them. They don't have a shelter, no? A sheltered bus stop? No, it's a regular one. Can we upgrade? Apparently so. They're not really using it, but it's a, it's a little bit better. Comfort-wise. A couple of people are in there. Maybe next time 
when they uh, realize where they are, they'll take shelter properly. Anyone taking this? Still nobody's taking that. That's such an anticlimactic thing for building that dairy farm. So yeah, this area seems to have worked out pretty well. Actually, you know what? Because we've got all this money now, I say let's just get spending. So, um, I was being very hesitant before because I was worried about the spend. But I'm going to build that second recycling center. Because I really wanted to before. So now we've got this big industrial area there. We could have the room for the upgrade of the mail storage extension. It's only 30,000, but it would fill out the area nicely, so let's do it. And we get XP. There's some sort of benefit to doing this. Now, the next thing then would be that helicopter firefighting depot. 1.2 million. I am thinking that we'll... Let me think about it for a second, but I think it's probably going to go there. Yeah, I'm happy enough with that. I'm going to actually push it a bit further to the back. We'll have room for other buildings at the front then. 1.2 million. 2,000 XP though, so that was quite a lot. And there it is. So 145,000 a month. But I think the area is really coming to life now. And I'll do a little bit of the in-between... Actually, you know what? We'll move this as well. I'll just pop this over here. Just at least for now. So the parking's a bit more uniform. Keep it in line. Uh, so what needs to be added is some trees. Trees between the rail and here. Now, obviously, you don't want trees on top of the rail. So some of the ones that are really close, I might end up getting rid of. But, um, yeah, just to kind of shelter the two areas away from each other. And then I have to kind of go in there and use some of the developer tools, maybe just to put down patches of grass and things. So I might actually just do that now really quickly. Oh, there we go. It's not much, but it adds a little bit of extra. I don't know. It just fills the place in, doesn't it? Just a little bit. Um, I thought I would use the same type of tree that it's using. So that's basically why I went for those. And a little bit of birch. Same type of grass as well. And some of the same hedge. Although the hedge for me, even though I think it's the exact same one, obviously has snow on it. Whereas their one doesn't for whatever reason. Because they're keeping it well. So there are tons of like little EV chargers and little flower pots and plants and stuff around here. But... Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Now, it's 9.34 a.m., so let's just switch to day-night cycle really quickly. Wow, 9.34 a.m. Super dark still. Holy crap. Clear sky, despite the rain, though. <laughs> What's going on there? So is that the moon? And the sun is going to be coming up over here, I suspect. Let's leave it at nighttime, though. Some people had asked uh, to see the place at night, so... Seeing as we're towards the end of the episode now. Uh, something I realized is that you can add lights to highways, and that actually extends power along the highway. Now, you can only do it if the highway is connected to a power source. So if I was just to add a segment of lights just in the middle of the highway, it wouldn't light up. You wouldn't even really notice that you've added it. But if you connect it all the way back to your town, then you can light up your entire highway, which is pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, and I guess that's also supposed to improve visibility and reduce, oh, careful, uh, it's supposed to reduce collisions and things like that, accidents from occurring. So that's pretty cool. Should we follow a car? Let me follow this bus. Where are they heading? They're going to Milford. No one ever comes in. These guys are going to Round Rock. That's not coming in either. Oh, this little motorcycle guy. Yeah, 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 this person's coming in. Lana Perkins. Lana Perkins. This is regular speed, by the way. Driving into the town, sunrise. On her hog. <laughs> I can maybe check out some of the industries who go past it. She's moving at 
really great speed. Remember, this is speed one. She's going really fast. <laughs> it is a highway. God damn. She ain't afraid. And then we have our extra farms that we've just built out as well. All the way. There's a lot of shimmering going on with the way the sun is rising right now. But it looks really nice, actually. She's in my new on-ramp, actually, yeah. Curious to see how she gets into her location. Didn't quite see exactly where it was. Need to plant some extra trees along here between the highway and the farms. Otherwise, looking good, though. Alright, slowing down as you have to go 60 now, which I think is totally reasonable. And then the island disappears, so everyone shifts over it down to 50. That's interesting. Down to 50. So 60 when there's a divided line, 50 when there isn't. Same road type, like medium type road, so. Ah, people are parking on my on-ramp thing. I have to change that. Right, and our improved roundabout running smoothly. Like we said, it's about 9 a.m., so it's going to be busy on the approach into the town itself. Yeah, there's always a little bit of traffic around there, but it's never too bad. It's never gotten too bad yet, but people do have a little bit of a wait while they're there. Oh, is she going to park? No, oh, no, she's going around. In the right-hand lane, you're either turning right or you're going to make a last ditch. Oh, look at that. Cutting in front of the bus. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed they do that after the first crosswalk, but I can't get rid of the crosswalk without getting rid of both. It just won't let me. It's nice seeing all the buses and everything working as they should. Ah, so she lives in the brambles. That's such a cool shot, actually, just seeing it. The, the big um, stone crusher in the distance. The grinder. Right down the middle of this uh, particular street. She's doing a little 180. They really have to do that. I don't know why they do that, because I've seen other vehicles cut across two lanes to get to where they want to go in terms of houses and stuff. But maybe, when, uh, maybe it's just when it comes to parking you can't do that. That could be why. Oh, she took her motorcycle helmet off and everything. Man, they these people are really desperate for parking. It makes sense. None of them have garages on these houses, right? They live in there's four or five households per house here. Huh? So where are you actually heading then? 60 Holmbush Drive. Oh, she's nearly home. Nearly home. There she is. Oh, oh someone's just died. Oh, her next door neighbor has died. Also, her house is different than all the rest. Oh, not all of them. Oh, actually, yeah. I guess that's based on their level, right? She's level two. These are level three. Oh, that's cool. I never actually kind of paid attention to that. Since they've leveled up, they actually have a different look to them now. Like, I, I knew they, they would, but I didn't think they'd actually literally move. I thought they'd maybe just be a sort of version of themselves. But it's actually quite a different model in there now. In the brambles. Quite liking the look of this place now. Cue the Coronation Street music. <laughs> if you know, you know. All right, uh, I think that's going to have to be it for this episode. So largely just focusing on building out a large amount of industry, checking on the trains, adding the post-sorting facility that nobody's using. This seems to be great. We're actually gaining money from it. The two recycling centers are now active, which maybe is overkill, I guess. We've added further storage for this building that wasn't even working, and we also added wastewater treatment plant. Are we treating all sewage right now? Yeah, 464,000 is the capacity, and our sewage was 80,000 I think. Now it's 111. Yeah, so we obviously have way more capacity than we need. If anything, it'd be great to import other people's crap, literally, and handle it. <laughs> That'd be cool if we could do that. And I'm really happy to see the trains are kind of rolling in now and everything. So next episode, big population expansion as we look to build out this entire area here. Uh, have a lot of people coming in via train and to see if we can handle all that. And if we can't, then we build across the water. And I'll probably connect up this highway just to reduce the amount of traffic coming through because it's going to get busy uh, when we start bringing in so many more people. Sun is very low in the sky at the moment. And we are about halfway through January. So just February to go and then no more winter into spring. And everything should be good for quite a ways to come. I was worried about traffic in this area as well, but it seems totally fine. Totally fine. This place is full of employees as well, and we tackled unemployment 
pretty well. We're down to 2.2%, so happy about that as well. All right, it's going to have to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.